Welcome to Meet the Biz. I, uh, as many people are on Facebook, on the internet, and I was on Facebook the other night, actually last week, and came across this woman that I've seen in concert before, and she was playing the whole set, and I started listening to it, and ah, the joy that I was having and then I turned in the next night and she was doing it again. And it was like, and I'm addicted. I, I, I'm like, oh my God, I've got to connect with her. And she is like an angel on earth. And it's interesting when times like these we go through, we, we um, come across these people who might have just been doing their own thing. And, and um, every night now she heals our hearts. Uh, through her music. She is, um, well, instead of like going on about it, this is an amazing performer, Kiki Epson. Kiki Epson, hello. Hello, David. <laughs> How are so you? sweet. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I, I come, I come from here and it's, I'm, I'm, was, I was, I'm tearing up thinking about it because your voice and your heart is, is truly of an angel. Um, I, I, and, and you might know the last name, Ebsen, because your dad, <laughs> and I'm talking to the audience because you know, um, it, your dad's Buddy Ebsen, was Buddy Ebsen. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah, you have you you were born into a a a, a, a family, a historic family. I I was it, and it's you know had its good good things and its bad things. <laughs> right. um, but it was uh, overall, you know, from my perspective now, it was an extraordinary opportunity, um, an incredible life experience, um, and a lot of people think if you're born to um, a famous you know, person, whether they be an actor or, or whatever, that life is just, oh, that's rosy and you've got all this money and you get all this opportunity. But, um, you know, there's a lot to figure out with um, in that situation because you have a parent that is so larger than life and you, you, it's really hard for you to find your own identity. Uh -huh. So that was where I spent a great deal of time exploring and discovering you know, by making making a lot of mistakes. I was a pretty stubborn, you know, youngster. So I I had a strong will to do something, although I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't think in, when I was a kid that, oh, I'm going to be a musician or a singer or what, none of that. I had no idea. I knew that I, I liked to play piano and I knew that I loved animals and I loved nature. But, um, you know, I really struggled for, to get on, out from under the shadow. And my mother was also very... Uh, prominent in the theater world in our community. And so we had these two really powerful parents that were trying to guide us, but, you know, through their filters, they didn't quite see always what your unique talents were, you know? So um, for me, that was, that could be difficult and I, um, to, to come to terms with, but, but we did, we all came, we, in, in there, while they were living, I had we had great connections toward the end of their life and now I have such a great relationship with them in their sort of afterlife. Right, right. And, and what you bring, I mean, uh, I mean, you're, you write songs, you, you started <laughs> off as I read on your website and, and, and read other places, you started off classically trained. Is that true? Uh, and then yeah, I, I went to college. Uh, you know, I always, I've, I've had a great deal of uh, exposure to all kinds of music. I have older sisters who've turned me on to, you know, the Joni Mitchell and Donovan and all that, you know, in the 60s. My parents were all about, my mother was all about the classical music and the, broad, the Broadway show, as was my father. My father was into jazz. So the house was just filled with albums playing you know, everybody from, you know, Joe Pass to Ella Fitzgerald to all the big band stuff, all the show tunes, everything. You know, my mother was, took us to all the you know, original cast productions of Hair and Fiddler on the Roof. You know, I mean, it was just, that's what we were exposed to. 
And it was amazing. I didn't realize how cool that was at the time. So then I, I had a, I, I, I loved rock music. And in my high school, that's what I did. I played rock, got into progressive rock. And then as I went into college, I fell into class. I, I loved classical. I did study a bit of classical as well. I loved the chords and all that. And I studied it in college and I got my degree actually in concert voice. So that's where that came from. Although I never anticipated that I would be an opera singer. It seems that my voice is suited to it, but it wasn't what my journey was going to ultimately be. Right. Well, I, because I read too, you you played in the Marriage of Figaro. Yeah, I was in Marriage of Figaro in college, our college yeah. production. I went to California Institute of the Arts, and right. and uh, it was fun. I I really enjoyed it. I did. Well, that what's so great about it is you have all these, you have all the different musics, and it comes through you in your own defined voice. Um, which is so beautiful to hear, which we're going to hear in a couple of minutes, which I'm excited. Um, I'm listening to you and I, 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 I'm so, and thank you again for being here. Um, Performing Arts Studio West, our school, we have a couple of music teachers and um, each of us are doing classes right now for the students since we're all at home being safe. Um, mm -hmm. And um, one of our, uh, both of our instructors uh, talk about those different style of musics and the different people and we go through different eras of history. So to hear this from you um, who, who lived it and, and growing up, I'm so blessed myself to feel like, you know, to have been born in the 60s and go through the 70s. I, I think it's, it was an incredible time to you know to to be exposed as i'm sure our parents were like well you didn't know what it was like in the 30s and 40s and i agree they had their you know as i explored my father's career with my to dad with love show I, I i realized yeah we didn't get that opportunity but we did get the 60s 70s and you know that era of songwriting and music and just everything that was going on you know theater and musicals um we're lucky we're really really lucky and then you went on to be backup singer for so many people, you worked with uh, what Chaka Khan. Um, uh, oh, well, I was a keyboard player. I, I played keyboards. Okay. Um, I played the synthesizers and keyboards, and I sang. So I was I, I did both. Right. Um, I was also what they call a MIDI programmer, um, which I could program music and sequences and samples. And the first job I ever had actually was with the group Chicago. Oh. God. In 1987. And I did two tours with them off stage, like behind the drum riser, I had a keyboard set up and a computer. And I would augment their sound through samples and sequences and through extra strings and bells and whistles and you know, occasional piano and organ part. But that was a great experience. That was my first real tour and world tour and you know, that huge band. And, and, then, and then I went on to work with Al Jarreau and Olivia Carlisle, Tracy Chapman, Christopher Cross, Michael McDonald, Boss Gack, and a whole, host of artists and lots of television, but always as a keyboard player singer, um, which was a cool role for me because, you know, and it's cool for the band because they could get an extra singer, you know, for the price of the keyboard player. Um, and I also, you know, make beautiful sounds and synthesized, you know, really luxurious synth pads and things. And in the early 90s, especially, everybody was into those big David Foster sounds and I would was really good at layering and, and, and recreating album sounds for the tours. So it was oh, amazing. I did 25 years. Wow, and to, to have both of that, to, to be a singer and a keyboard player gave you uh, not double trouble, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, they loved well, it. No, it was a double threat, in a way a triple threat with the programming ability because I wasn't, I could, you know, I could, pro again, I, it wasn't like I did just press a button. I actually knew how to program the sound and, you know, if somebody wanted a little more of this or that in that sound, I could do it. Otherwise, you'd need a keyboard tech to come in and like, you know, make the sound. But um, I never considered myself a singer. I know that that sounds, my, I'm absolutely not crazy about my voice at all. I wanted to sound like, you know, I wished I could have sound like Ann Wilson from Heart Now. There's a singer, you know, like to me, like she was the ultimate. Yeah. So it took me years to discover my voice. Yeah. and I really become friends with it because there's so many different colors. I didn't know how to use it properly. Well, I don't say that. I didn't quite know how to access all the colors. 
I would either sing one way or another way or try to imitate somebody. And it just was frustrating to me for years. I mean, right. years. Yeah. Um, so only in the last probably six years have I started to go, oh, wow, that's really pretty. Or oh, now I know how to sing a certain way to bring out the quality. I, well, I can hear it now. And how, how, you know? I mean, that's the question. How did you access the colors? How did you find the colors within you? Ironically, it was when I really started to study jazz as mm -hmm. a vocalist. And that was about six years ago. Um, not my style is jazzy. So you might, I was, I've been considered a jazz artist for decades, but I never really felt like one. Um, it wasn't until I recorded Scarecrow Sessions, which was the, the, the record for my dad and my dad's honor with the songs from the shows that he was in back in the 30s and 40s, um, that I actually went into a studio with a bunch of jazz musicians in New York City. You know, um, I, I went to New York, got a, a really good dear friend, David Mann, produced it. And we had uh, uh, John Patitucci and Chuck Loeb, and, like, amazing jazz players. And I just sang. I didn't even play. I had, cause, cause I'm not a jazz player. I'm a, you know, I play singer songwriter, but I had real cats, you know, yeah. and that exploration of the freedom of just singing that started to access the colors that I'd been unable to get to for so long that, and as a study of improvisation, which I did, I had spent a year with a, an amazing improv, improvisational singer. If any, I mean, since you're teaching, if anybody ever, comes across the opportunity to study with a lady named Rhiannon. She is one of the most incredible improvisational teachers you will ever find. It's not Rhiannon, Rhiannon. And she's um, a woman who's been doing it for years. She's in her 70s, I think. And she, she does workshops all over the world. She's based in Hawaii. It opened up the door to my ability to create um, on, on, in the moment. And I'm not just talking about improvisation as, as it pertains to jazz. It's it's as it pertains to life. Yeah. It's like improv theater, but with voice. It's totally improv theater. You are in the moment, you you just start, and then another person, you, if you do it in a group, another person starts and they interact with you, and then the third person, and you get this extraordinary piece of music in the, in the moment. I, I, it blew my mind, and so now everything, I, I'm so able to just go off into another world, and I'm not worried about it's looking silly because a lot I think a lot of people when they start to improvise they get they are already start to get nervous like oh no what syllables do I use and how do I do it and I go you you don't even think about it you yeah. just are um, so anyway that all started me in that process of, of finding my voice and becoming more comfortable with it I am so I'm so glad that you brought up the in the moment and and how it connects not just to you as an artist but to you as a human being and in the life that we are in um, yeah. because that is so important it's not it's not quote acting it's not just singing it's living it's living and that as you know as a coach and teacher I'm sure that's what you coach you know when they start getting sticky in their in the performance you're like no that's not no, where you're no. going at. and she did the same thing Rhiannon would say you're, you're now you're performing uh, this isn't a performance this is be in the moment. Don't go to your your routine licks. Don't don't go into your bag of tricks. Yeah. You, you know this is the moment, and you start. And she accesses the body too. She works with dance, incredible improvisational dancers, and you. It's an amazing experience for anybody who's in the arts. You know. So anyway, I, I was very blessed to have that opportunity, and then to explore the show about my dad, which took me into a whole world of. Of, of performing on stage as an, as an actor and, right. and studying some and dance and studying his dance steps. And it just, I'm just fall. I'm just showing up and the day sort of unfold into whatever it is I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I know. But, and, and as you're doing that, you're, you're healing others. The other night, like I mentioned, I was online and I, then I did one of those watch parties mm -hmm. and I added like, 20 people and more people even showed up just because I posted it. And I got comments from friends who live like in Northern California, in like uh, New York. And they're all like, oh my God, you know, some have heard you before, some haven't. So it was like, <gasps> so oh. what you're doing is amazing. 
and and you you're here to sing uh, one or two songs today. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. I love it. Well, I, everyone, Kiki Epson. Here we go. Here we go. All right, these are two of my songs, <clears throat> and this first one is called "Love Wait for Me." resonate with them all but that one just that one really heals me when I sing it uh, it's, it's, it's like a dear friend 
And I wrote that, um, you know, I wrote that, and I, I don't know if you what in one of the shows I talked about, you know, my husband and I are married for the second time. Mm. And that was a song I wrote when we were separated for the first time. Ah. So I had a lot of hope, but a lot of sadness in it too. And we both had to go on separate journeys for about five years. And then when we came back, we started dating again and remarried just about three years ago. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's interesting, you know, I, I definitely, I live my art, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And to, to listen to that, I was just, again, entranced by you. And after hearing how you do come from the moment, I felt it. And that's, as an audience member, I feel that's what makes you so different than some people who just perform and sing, because you are so connected to what you do, it connects us and makes us feel it. Oh, that's cool. Um, thank you. I, it, you know, it's, it's, it's been great for me to do all these shows because I throw it all out there. And, you know, sometimes I mess it up and have to stop and do, start, and start again. And it freaked me out at first. And then I went, you know what? This is life, you know? And, and to be brave enough to just do it. I mean, you know, we're all so hard on ourselves. And yeah. I'm the first one. I mean, I am so hard on myself. I'm such a perfectionist. I, I, it, it kills me to make a mistake, especially if I'm playing for people. Yeah. Um, but it's so real and honest. And if you aren't, if you can't get over being afraid to make a mistake, you'll never be brave enough to be in the moment. Right. Over rehearsed and you'll never have that. And even that won't help you. I could play the same song 10 times and the 11th time I'd still, I could still make a mistake. So you just you kind of have to get over the perfectionist, perfectionistic part of performing in order, I think, to yeah. really shine out as a performer. Yeah, we, we think, uh, we hear that, oh, we have to be perfect, but truly being perfect is being imperf- imperfect. Because we're not perfect. Right. And you know, I have to say my dad was brilliant at being imperfect. He would wing it all the time and he'd get it right or not, you know? And, and I just loved watching him just be himself and the audience just adored him no matter what he did. I mean, he just, they adored him. And so I, I, uh, I have a really warm feeling about, you know, my dad as a performer and being able to watch him from the wings sometimes, you know, and just go, wow. Right. He's really, he's good. <laughs> well, to, I mean, to watch him on TV growing up, watching the Beverly Hillbillies, watching Barnaby Jones. I mean, he seemed like such an amazing man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was a stoic man. He was, you know, Danish and German. Right. They didn't talk about their feelings much, you know. Um, but I see what he was trying to do. Like, if I wasn't, if I didn't get it when I was 17, I get it now. Uh, I, 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 I got it. I got it, yeah. <laughs> I love when we learn later or sometimes we get messages later. And I think there are messages there, and I, I encourage everybody to, to, you know, who lost their parents, um, you know, or, or just in, are feeling that tremendous loss. I mean, you're going to see them all over your life if you just take a deep breath and exhale. They, they show up in incredible ways. Mm. You want to hear another? Oh, do I? Of course. <laughs> oh, my God. Here, here we go. I love it. This is... Um, relatively new song it's coming out on a record i'm putting out this summer and um i like it because it's the peace out it's the quiet after the storm it's the peace we're looking for and the harmony that that we strive for um but even with harmony there has to be discord so that we can have harmony so it's all all yin yang it's called peace harmony Harmony. That's 
go to a really good movie or a really good concert and you're sort of speechless afterwards because it's just like you're taking it in. Aww. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I can imagine what each song inspires you. I, I can see you just breathe in and it just comes out. Is, is that how it works for you? Yeah, it, you know, yes, and especially if I allow it to. I mean, you know, sometimes there are situations where you feel on the spot or you get nervous. Um, you know, your nerves will take over, and it, it happens. But I, um, I've been able, I, I've really been able to handle a lot of that through breathing. And I do yoga, so yoga ha involves a lot of breathing techniques. And when you really, you know, can, can control your breathing and breathe in and out and take in as much air, and you start to uh, control the rhythm of your breathing you won't be doing those shallow breaths and you're, you can control your heartbeat and your, your your pulse rate when the nerves take over um, and that's really gotten me out of a few jams um, where I felt but for whatever reason I, I in particular I was doing a show at Catalina's right. it was a, a cabaret version of my dad's show to dad with love yeah and um, Debbie Reynolds had just passed away and she's a family friend and it was just you know, two days after Carrie Fisher had died. And so we were dedicating the show to her that night. 
and my brother who does the show with me, the multimedia part, you know, put a big frame up there. And I just felt like I need, this show is gonna be important to this audience um, because the show is about connecting your parents after they passed away. Right. And since now Debbie was involved, I felt this big responsibility, you know, to, to um, do a good performance. But that pressure put, you know, it was undue pressure for me. So I just sat and I would just did this breathing thing for about five minutes and got really focused and really centered and went on stage and just went and did it, you know, stayed in the moment. Yeah. It's nothing, if you get pulled off focus, um, it, that's where it all gets a little bit, a little, you know, a hazy. A hazy right. Thing. And it's interesting how, you know, you're talking about performing and also you're creating the creation of a song is yeah. is the word that you used, which I love, is um, allow. You allow it to happen and the creativity to happen. And that is um, that's something I do. You know, I work with horses. I do natural horsemanship, oh. and um, I teach it. And I have a little herd of rescued horses. That's like my daytime. Thing. Oh, how wonderful! And um, the allowing. Um, you know, putting the pressure on the horse and then allowing them to do the thing that you've asked them to do is what the goal is. It's not the pressure to do something. It, the pressure only motivates the action. Uh, the allow is what completes the action. Yeah. So, so we take it, I take it into my life, you know, and obviously you know, the singing part, um, it, it's exactly so. The problem is it's a leap of faith. You know, if you mm. allow something to happen, you're not, well, I'm not controlling it. You know, it can't go well, you know, but it could. But you could fall off the wire, too. So that's the chance you take every time you stay in the moment. Yeah. Um, you may blame. Um, it happens. But more often than not, you'll have brilliant, like, genius moments, more moments of genius than you think you know. Yeah. And I notice, too, a lot of times when I have blanked in the middle of a scene or w whatever I'm, or a song, it's because you're so in the moment that you're like totally so i'm the queen of making up lyrics <laughs> oh my god i'm always like whoa well that, that was an interesting choice of words but i'll just keep going unless it's a complete train wreck and then i'll stop and say okay the, the song deserves a little more than that but um i rewrote my own song there but you know it gives me great um joy to watch the greats like Ella Fitzgerald make up lyrics on the spot and Joni Mitchell she I, there was some tv show where she just stopped in the middle of her song when I gotta do that again or you know or she tried out a new song so I just have a verse of this do you mind if I play it? national television you know it's like that's amazing so um do your thing you know just do your thing, do your thing. Yeah, well Kiki thank you thank you thank you so much for coming today and being a part of this good dear um, uh, <laughs> um, if, if, if what's your website again, so people can go to your website? Kiki Ebsen, Kiki Ebsen .com. It's K I K I E B as in boy S E N dot com, and there you can access everything. You my my music, I have records. I have the live streams I'm doing now, live shows. Hopefully, hopefully starting in May, at the end of May, uh, well, I I I start my my uh, my my shows in Southern California. I do Joni Mitchell. I do my own show. Um, yeah, please come and connect with me. Join my web my uh, email site. Come watch us on Facebook too. Every yeah. night. Elizabeth Every night. Over. <laughs> well, I look forward to that as well as seeing you live again in person. Thank you. Stay well and safe, and sending love to your family. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. <laughs>